go. Hello, uh, this is a Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We're on March 14, 2023. Uh, it's Pi Day. Uh, more on that later on. Yeah, it's Pi Day today. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> today we're lucky ha enough to have Mark Waite with us and Kenneth Ken Salerno. Hope I didn't butcher your name. Uh, we have a few open action items. This one you've seen them for a few meetings and you'll see them in a few <laughs> meetings too, for a few meetings. But that's okay. Some things have changed. We'll see what's done. Uh, some uh, updates, experiments. We'll still discuss about uh, CentOS 7, and today we have another subject about PowerPC. That should be interesting. Anyhow, so on the open action items, we still have the Docker images container, um, Docker container for Ablution. Um, it's deprecated, but we haven't announced it yet. So we need to announce it, uh, update the page of Docker, it's a hub. Uh, we start the meetings the same way. We've been doing that for quite a while now. Someday uh, we'll address that issue. Um, Mark, I can't remember. Uh, we told that we would create an issue to propose the deprecation and the needed steps. Yeah, uh, that's me. That's oh, it's me. you. Oh, right. That is because oh, sorry. I think it's, <laughs> this is part of the bigger picture of us. Yeah, of the JEP. We Maybe want you're... we want a yeah. Jenkins enhancement proposal that provides us a way to communicate to users that they are now running a system that will be deprecated or after the deprecation date, they are running a system that has been deprecated. And right now the Jenkins administrative monitors don't really have the concept. So it's we think it's a concept we need to add and then a way to communicate that concept into the, into the code. So uh, if you don't mind, we could switch then to the CentOS 7 Jenkins controller Docker image because it's linked somehow because it's a product that will go end of life sooner or later. So yes, we will need a Jepso, uh, Jenkins enhancement proposal to add right. the CentOS 7 image earlier than June. Yeah, and, and that's part of it. I'll I'll do that. And I'm reasonably comfortable writing Jeps, so I'm not not frightened by the the, the level of detail there's there are a bunch of things that this exposes that oh we got to think about this and about this etc yeah um, maybe what will take the big part of time is discussing about the jeb instead of implementing i guess that should be not a one-liner of course but uh we have to know um what the community thinks about that before doing anything of course right. thanks mark um Next, what's done? Because yes, we not only have open action items, we also do things from time to time. So the latest uh, images for the agent have been released. We have a release for SSH, Docker agent, and inbound, inbound agent. It's not uh, groundbreaking. It's just Debian uh, most of the time that has been updated. So from an older version uh, from to another uh, more recent version of Bullseye. And our Linux also for the Docker agent has been updated. We don't know how much time we will keep updating uh, our Linux, or if we will get rid of it one of these days. We'll see that later on. Now, a subject which is not yet official, but nonetheless, I'm working on that uh, from time to time, RIX5 and Jenkins. So I wrote a blog post um, last week and Kevin Martins helped me greatly in uh, correcting and making some suggestions to the article so that now it is readable and so it's all about my experience with jenkins on a risk 5 machine for timing it's only for the agent so no controller and no docker image uh, but that will come one of these days then uh power pc support in the container image controller and agents maybe so can um what can you tell us about that? So, <clears throat> if I may, let me. Um, of course. Share my screen. If you oh, want. please do so. Okay, it's, uh, I think we have to wait. Mm -hmm. So first, I'll show you what. The uh, let me just minimize this. Okay, so this is the. The node that's running in the uh, in Docker. So you'll see uh, this was built um, 
on an Ubuntu server. And the server is AMD, uh, AMD 64. So I believe, uh, I believe there's a way I can actually show you in the script console. So here, so there you go. So it's showing that the container itself is um, being run with QEMU user static. I think you're both familiar with that. Uh, uh, are you using that, <coughs> Mark, with your S390 build? I, I don't know if we're using QEMU static or just QEMU, but we're definitely using something like that because we're not building the container images on S390. So right. we I, are don't assume, I don't assume you have a uh, a mainframe. Actually, we we have we access have. to one, oh. and that that's the really cool thing. But we we are delighted not to have to use it. <laughs> so let me share what I do. Yeah, if we build X, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Are you are you able to see my console? Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, x86. Mm -hmm. And what's running now as a Docker container is um, what I used as my build host. This is uh, Docker dash buildx. And then I put the arc, the architecture, which we can, <clears throat> you can actually specify there's many, many different architectures that's provided by yes. the, the, the minus minus platform. Uh... No, so what I use is, um, so I, I made a script because I'm lazy and I just wanted to, to do document it. Uh, so after, so after, I knew, so this code block here is just to initialize the Ubuntu server with the community edition of Docker. So these mm -hmm. steps are familiar to you already. Uh, so once Docker is up and running, I have a build command where I, uh, I create a new Docker container that uh, oh. is the QEMU user static uh, container. And if you give this uh, privileges to mount partitions from the host and you give it certain parameters that are needed to make QEMU user static fully functional, it will create the necessary bin format misc for the kernel to know that when you're executing when you're uh, executing something that's in PowerPC, a little Indian, or if you chose uh, System 390, it'll know to use this um, the user static binary to execute the container command that you're running automatically. Okay. So this is how you can make a container that's a foreign architecture and not yeah. have to emulate the entire kernel and operating system, which is much much slower. <clears throat> so when I so I'll show you my uh, log file. So this is the log file of when I installed QEMU user static container. And this is all the architectures that it supports here. So you'll see it's got ARM, uh, it's got Power PC, Big Indian, and Little Indian. It's got uh, everything you'd ever want. RISC uh, V is in here. And, and of course, uh, the mainframe system 390X is here. <clears throat> so I of course, chose to install the PowerPC 64 Little Endian Ubuntu as my container. And then I installed the packages I need to have a buildx environment. Um, so one important detail that I didn't uh, really spell out <laughs> is um, you, can't, you can't run the Docker service inside of a QEMU user static container. So what I did was I start the Docker service on my host and then I forward my mm -hmm. socket to the container. Okay. You see that there? Mm -hmm. yes. So if you so if I connect to my uh, container right now so right now I'm on the container, and you'll see here it's a PowerPC architecture. When I do a Docker PS, it's, it's communicating with the host's Docker. 
and you'll notice it sees itself and it sees my Jenkins uh, container that I created. So this is the way I get around when I want to build and test. I have, and, it, and when you build, it wants to load the image to, um, to Docker, the finished so. So these images got written by the build by the um, the build X script right here. Uh, but again, this is all happening impossible because I forwarded my Docker socket to the container while I'm inside this foreign architecture. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about the patch. Um, very simple. So what I was talking. Uh, what I was referring to earlier, Mark, was I just took what you're doing with System 390, added my little Endian PowerPC 64 so that we, you know, to enable the build to not die on unknown CPU. And then in the uh, bake HCL file, I just added myself to the end here and I'm only building this uh, Debian JDK 11, which is copying what you did with. Uh, system 390. Yeah, I think uh, we had something like that a few months ago, but we removed just about everything because we lost access uh, to the PPC 64 LE machines. Am I right, Mark? Uh, that was part of it. The other part was that QAM, QAMU was not working for us. And I think Ken oh. has solved the QAMU not working for us okay. thing. So, so the, the, the unavailability and, and Oregon State University is willing to give us access, give open source projects access to the PPC 64LE hardware oh, nice. if we request it. And since we've already got an, a relationship with OSU, I'm not terribly worried about them granting that. They already, they've hosted us for years. Ken, could you bring that back up? I wanted to, so, so this patch, I think means that it's the controller. So this is this, you, you made this patch, you applied this patch in the repository whose name is Jenkins CI slash Docker, I suspect. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So this is the controller. And the consumers that needed this, was this enough for them? Or have they not yet given you an answer of, oh, yeah, this is what we need? So I, my uh, colleague, Daniel Casali, is the one who opened the ticket in the first place. I'll, mm -hmm. uh, I'll go back and ask him. I think it's his account. Okay. And I'll explain this is what I built so far. And if they need something else, if you, if you don't mind, maybe um, putting it in the chat, uh, what I have to build. Oh, absolutely here. Let me paste. So let's, I'm going to first paste into the chat what I think you, where I think you were based on. And then, then you can say, oh, well, no, that's not even where I did it. So the, I yeah, think. It. it was here. It was GitHub, uh, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins, CI, it was that one. Good. Okay. So that matches it. And that's, that's the controller image. Okay. So, and, and that's the one, that's the one that the con our contact who I forget her name, but uh, a, a woman of an Indian or East Asian name was, was helping coordinate the work on S390. And she wanted to be sure we had a controller image. And, and so that was the there. And I'll have to check to see if, if we've got S390 or if we've got any other images, if we did, they would be in this one is the agent base image. And then there are two consumed by users agent images that derive from the base image. There's this one is the um, agent used in places like Kubernetes. So that inbound agent is, is used in Kubernetes cases. Okay. The SSH agent, this one is used in, in cases where, where the controller orchestrates or controller launches and controls the connection to the agent. Yeah, but when Mark says uh, derives if in the idea, not in the code yet. <laughs> yes, yeah. right. Thanks. But yeah. it's a project we have. 
Bruno's correct. The architectural. Sorry. I was I was describing mythical rather than <laughs> rather than literal dependency. Yeah, right. So can and I don't. I I'm assuming that what they wanted was controllers, okay. because they've got something they they want to do, and I suspect they haven't yet arrived at the point of saying, "Ooh, but we also need agents." But I would assume they will eventually say, oh, yes, we need agents, particularly if they say, oh, we're running Kubernetes on PowerPC, then they're going to need the inbound agent. If they say, oh, we're not running Kubernetes, we're just running our own static agents, we're a financial institution, we need this or that, then, then it may just be uh, st the SSH agents. Got it. All right. Well, I'll build all three of them and let you know. Um, okay. And I assume I'm I'm going to need a similar patch to a make file and and the, the big uh, HDL. Yeah, too. the big for sure make file. Why why not? Yeah. Yeah, and I I don't remember if those if those those agents are a little bit cringe worthy, and we apologize in advance. I'm I'm actually quite pleased with how the controller builds. The that build X stuff is really elegant. I'm not sure that the agents are nearly that elegant. So you may find ugly rather unpleasant things there just ask questions if you do sure yeah sure. but maybe uh, just so to talk a bit i think i remember i removed uh a few weeks ago all references to ppc 64 le uh from the agent images or was it from the documentation <laughs> no, so, well, yeah can I, can I ask a question since i have the build working uh for the controller would it be too much to just ask you to put them back in for all four of these since I'm doing builds and this way I won't have to patch them? Because as far as the agents, I'm, I'm going to have to go and read the code and figure out where I need to insert myself anyway. It, would you guys be able to just put that back in there? I think it's a reasonable request, but I feel like I've got to check with the security team. That was one of the one of the things that we had. A, we had a visit from the security team a few meetings ago. And they said specifically, hey, please be careful about what you add because everything that you add increases responsibility on the security team to worry about caring for it. Okay. So so I, the, I, your attendance here is the crucial step that says, okay, let's start that conversation. And we, Bruno and I, or Bruno can bring it to the security team and say, hey, yeah. we've got a proposal, we've got a maintainer, Ken is willing to be a maintainer, and he's said he's willing to be a maintainer. And so having a maintainer that's that's aligned with, for instance, another an IBM employee, um, Oliver, Oliver Gonja, is the maintainer of the UBI nine image, and and we rely on maintainers, right? So having yeah. a maintainer is the is the crucial thing. Yeah, I mean it's easy enough, and like I said, I already scripted it, so it's not a right. not a heavy lift. Great. So yeah, and that's that's the piece that. So long as so long as we've got your involvement and your willingness to continue being involved, uh, that feels like a reasonable request that we can take to the security team. Okay, I, I could start um, toying around with it in the meantime, but I'll, I'll wait for those commits. Makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Kim and, and Bruno. Could you could you note just for the controller image for now? Oh. So this this initial step is, yeah. Can we can we enable it for the controller image because that will simplify things for Ken as he evolves further. Okay. So let me put that in the action items. And then, Mark, if you have a contact outside of the forum, I could report to you if I was able to build those agents. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mark. Dot, yeah. You're welcome to just send me email. Mark. Earl. Wait at gmail.com. It's all over the place. Okay. Or you can do it in, in pull requests. That's fine too. Just men at mention me in GitHub. Either is fine. Okay. Uh, not thinking about security. I would be thrilled to have PPC 64 LE back. Uh, you know, each platform we add, I know it's a security issue, but uh, it's a nice thing for me to have another platform. So another other potential users, you never know. Uh, Ken, anything you would like to add before switching subject? No, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you for coming, by the way. Mark, uh, you were at Scale X last weekend and you had a Jenkins booth. And on this booth, you had a demo 
Uh, that was it. And did it work? I think the goal was just to have a nice breaker. So can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah. So we, I, I created a stack of six Raspberry Pis from that I've acquired over the course of the last seven years and connected them to a network switch, each of them running Raspbian and one of them running the Jenkins controller, the other five running Jenkins agents. And I built Jenkins plugins with them. So I oh. built the implied, I know it's kind of boring that really I no, use Jenkins not. to build Jenkins, but it's, I you built the implied pl labels plugin, the crush platform shell plugin and the platform labeler plugin. And interesting experience because building big Java code in a 500, 500 uh, megabyte pie is, is not always successful, right? Oh. I mean, that's but tiny. But you made it. it, it I like it much better when I've got at least a gig of memory and much, much better when I've got four or eight. Yeah, because I failed the platform lab plugin, for example, with one gigabyte of memory and I also failed the Git um, client plugin. I failed yeah, the I Git would plugin. And... I would expect the Git plugins to fail with anything less than eight because I have never given one thought to how much memory those things use of in terms of in terms of their tests, their, their focus was always check that they are functional, that they're well behaved and use as much memory as is available. Yeah, so so it went great. Uh, it was a good icebreaker. Several people asked the question, wow, how did you get your Raspberry Pi since uh, they're hard to get right now? And the answer was I, I bought them years ago, uh, <laughs> which is not a very satisfying answer to the people who attend, but it's the truth. Yeah, you could have made a few bucks by selling them under the table. <laughs> right. And yeah. yeah, congrats, well done. Um, is there any other subject you would like to address before we wrap it up? That's it from me. So Ken, we'll continue our conversation either by email or in pull requests. Sounds good. Great. All right, nice meeting everybody. <laughs> cool, thanks a lot, Ken. Um, the video should be available on YouTube from 24 to 48 hours, and we'll see each other um, in two weeks from now. Have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take care.